Welcome again to JCTV Spotlight on the Arts. Uh, today is September the 12th, 2018, in a fall setting at the Missouri State Capitol of Jefferson City, Missouri. Today on Spotlight on the Arts, uh, I find, I'm really happy to be honored to, to be uh, uh, interviewing Mr. Gary Lucy and uh, his wife, uh, the Honorable Mayor of Washington, Missouri, uh, Miss Sandy uh, Lucy also. Spotlight on the Arts, you know, is now uh, basically endorsed by many artists, as you see here on Spotlight on the Arts. I'm your host, by the way, I'm Rick Jay, and uh, I'd like to now turn, if I may, uh, to Mr. Lucy and uh, Mrs. Lucy. Uh, and it's, it's tell them how excited I am uh, to turn the spotlight on you today here on JCTV. Yes. Indeed, we're proud to be here. Well, Gary, if I may call you by your first name. Yes, indeed, please. Uh, please, if you would, tell us a little bit about uh, those highlights of your life uh, that best describe uh, Gary Lucy. Well, I grew up in uh, southeast Missouri. I grew up in Carruthersville, Missouri, and a uh, small town, uh, Basically, a uh, kiddo grew up playing baseball and so forth and so on. Uh, after high school, I graduated in 1967. I went to uh, Southeast Missouri State University and uh, graduated from there with a, an art degree. Uh, I taught school in the Washington School District for one year in the 71-72 school year. And uh, I really wanted to be an artist and so forth. Uh, uh, I, I, Teaching was fine, uh, but I decided I wanted to, to try my hand at it. So I quit my teaching job in 72, and uh, I've been very fortunate to be able to make a living as an artist for the last 46 years. There's a lot of other little stories that go along in there and so forth, but that's basically sort of a Reader's Digest version of from where we started to where we are today. Excellent. And your art speaks so well of you and your dedication to well, art. Thank you, thank you very much. And those past 46 some, what, some odd years. Mm -hmm. I, generally at this time, we send a shout out to the wife and the children. Oh sure, this is my wife Sandy, and uh, Sandy manages the gallery in Washington. We have a gallery in Washington, Missouri, uh, and uh, we I believe I've had that gallery now since 80, so about 40. I mean, 38 years, something like that. But Sandy manages the gallery, and she also manages the city of Washington, too. So awesome. I'm very proud of her. She's the first female mayor of Washington, Missouri, and she's now in her third term. So mm -hmm. she understands the discipline and uh, management and so forth. And not only that, the dedication that you and the support that you have given mm -hmm. Mr. Geary here the last mm -hmm. few years. Uh, would you like to say hello to your constituents. Or well, I could certainly do that, but I, I want to just uh, comment on how important it really is for an artist to be successful. They certainly need someone to support them, and uh, they need the person who, the steady, the person who's always there, the person who's uh, ready to, to move and do whatever they need to have done, because uh, I've learned a lot through, through uh, my years with Gary. Uh, initially, I just was... Uh, I, I was enamored with his talent because I'd always wanted one of his pieces of work. When I got a real job, I was going to buy a print, and now I have been married to him for 30-something uh, years. But anyway, uh, but uh, you just, uh, artists have to have support, and I think it's just really important, and I'm honored to have done that all these years and, and continue Sandy, on. Sandy's always done an excellent job of that. It, it's uh, marketing, advertising, promotion, uh, framing the work, uh, 
it takes a great deal of backup involved in that. Art is, art is a business. Uh, if you want to make a living as an artist, you have to treat it as a, a business and so right. forth. Now we're going to take a, a look at that business after the break. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, field taping that you uh, permitted me to come to the gallery sure, sure. and uh, visit with you. And, and we enjoyed take having some, you there. Uh, some fairly decent shots, uh, but people will actually get to see what it looks like in there. And, sure. and again, your dedication with the the family and, and running the uh, other part of it. We'll get a look at that. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I'd like to inv invite Gary back in the future because he has a really um, a bottom line on how to market art and a lot of history there, uh, should we say, uh, of how to become a successful artist. So uh, hopefully we can do that yes, in the future. Indeed. Be more than happy to. Right. Now, um, Gary, can you share with us then basically how you were first inspired to become an artist and, and what inspires you now to continue on such a... Well, you know, uh, a lot of people ask me, uh, have you always been an artist? A lot of people say, oh, I've drawn all my life and this is my whole life's ambition and so forth. And it really hasn't been that way with me. Um, I go back to actually the third grade. I had uh, oh, yes. a third grade teacher, Mrs. Janier, and uh, I remember she called my mother in for a parent-teacher conference in the third grade, and she said, uh, oh, of course, naturally, that scared me to death. What in the world did she want, you <laughs> sure. know, to go in there? Uh -huh. uh, but uh, Miss Janier pointed to some work that was on the wall, and, and she basically said, you know, Edith, do you see something different to any of these? And she pointed to one of them, and we were painting trees. Yeah. And most kids in the third grade paint a little lollipop type tree. Exactly. And uh, I had painted a tree with limbs on it and oak leaves and things like that. And um, that's kind of how you, I, I taught elementary art for one year. And, and that's basically you start to see a kid that can perceive and, and interpret and that sort of thing. That it, It's a hand-eye coordination type thing. Right. And uh, she comes home and my mom comes and says, Miss Janier says you need to be an artist. And well, when you're a kid and everybody else is interested in football and baseball and things like that, <laughs> you can be heard a little bit as being the sissy of the neighborhood and being in art. So I really wasn't interested in it. Uh, I know I went to college and I was gonna go into computer programming in 1967. I mean, <laughs> It was a joke at that point. <laughs> and my counselor told me to get out of computers and uh, get a CPA. So I sat down and I was gonna, be, uh, I was gonna get a CPA. And uh, I spent the first couple of years involved in that. And the guy down the hall from me said, let's take a drawing class. And I said, well, really? You know, uh -huh. I kind of they give you credit for that. And he said, sure. So I actually took my first drawing class as a recreational class uh, because the accounting was very difficult and so forth and where we were going with it. And I liked the kids and I liked the art and um, I changed my major. Uh, as I said, I, I taught, I, when I graduated, I taught school for one year. Uh, when I was in college, I met a gentleman who was an artist that had come to Cape and so forth. And I really had, growing up, I had never really met a real artist, a person that paid his way and that I sort of thing. I and uh, uh, so I was very much influenced by this particular individual at that time. And I thought, well, you know, I could do that, you see. Yes. So I taught for one year and I quit my job and that was 46 years ago. Excellent, excellent. I did wildlife art for approximately 12 to 14 years. Uh, then I converted to historic interpretation and that's and dealing with the inland waterways. Uh, inland waterways, the highways of our heritage has been the uh, focus of my work for about the last 35, 36 years. Excellent. So that really, uh, I was going to ask you your favorite subject matter, but that pretty, that pretty well covers it. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, if you do um, go to uh, Mr. Lucy's website, you'll see it's very well represented. Even we have a brochure that he uses for marketing purposes. Um, very well done, inside and out. And uh, so we invite you to take a look. We'll be giving that website later. Well, now your medium, uh, some of the artists naturally in Jefferson City area in mid-Missouri, what is your favorite medium? Well, I, I actually, I love to draw, uh, but I found out early on in my career that drawings 
really are not as marketable as paintings. Uh, people want paintings, they want color and that sort of thing. Uh, I did wide, watercolor for approximately the first six years of my career, and I got a, a commission to do a mural for the Bank of West Plains. I well, see. murals and watercolor, they don't really work together too well, so I converted to oil, and of course I've stayed with oil ever since. I tried acrylics uh, off and on, but I never was very happy with acrylics. Uh, they never really provided the color uh, that I wanted. Um, there's a lot of push and pull with acrylics mm -hmm. that I didn't really care for. I like the drying time mm -hmm. sometimes. Yes. Sometimes I don't like the drying time. The intensity. But oil intensity. tends to be the best uh, solution to my problem. I find that also. I love the magic, as I call it, of oils. Mm -hmm. Very controllable, especially. Sure. I notice that you do use the grain down technique with mm -hmm. your different values mm -hmm. for different effects mm -hmm. to form and uh, shape. Mm -hmm. and well, shape I, I work with a relatively minimal uh, palette. I only use about six colors and with a, maybe a, a little thrown into the side. Sure. But that came back from the mural days uh, because if you start throwing too many colors into the situation, it's just almost impossible to match colors. And yes. when you're working with a mural, large spaces over a period of time, you got to be able to match those colors day exactly. after day. So I stay with this relatively small palette. And, and the balance is important with a, a six, six value, uh, should we say, or a different uh, color, uh, color values mm -hmm. within, uh, much easier to control. Uh, well, I, I'll, I'll set and I'll mix uh, uh, neutral tones. I'll mix uh, cool neutrals, warm neutrals, and a basic gray wow. neutral platform. Yes. And everything literally can come out of that. Uh, I work from somewhat of a minimalist palette and uh -huh. so forth in that nature. I, I uh, you know, everything you see is, uh, if you're going to work from nature and so forth, is actually some, some value of gray to a certain extent. Um, it depends, and I don't want to, you know, say that everything you see is gray particularly, but I can make a case for if every single value you see around you is some form of those those three tonal values yes. that I talked about, you see. I also try to do the same. Okay. I attempt to do the same, so I understand. And I think most of our artist uh, viewers will uh, uh, understand also. Mm -hmm. Actually, after the break, we talked about looking at a visit, and you'll see Gary uh, at work in the studio uh, using those uh, those basic uh, colors and tones, values, uh, minimal minimal palette that he incorporates into a beautiful painting. And we'll talk. Um, uh, we've got some great questions ahead uh, as we take a look at that. Was there anything right before break you would like to say, Gary? Oh uh, no, not really. Uh, just uh, well, let's just converse and keep going forward. Sounds great. Okay. okay well, we we'll right back after the break. Hang with us. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Rick J., your host for 
Spotlight on the Arts here at JCTV, uh, v, uh, a taping today, naturally, uh, at the uh, college, the Lincoln University level. And I'm uh, going to now continue with our special guest, uh, Mr. Gary Lucy, and the Honorable Mayor of Washington, Missouri, Miss Sandy Lucy. So I just had to throw that in there, you know. So Gary is here today uh, to give us an overview of his life experience, naturally, on canvas, wherever, as an artist through a window only you can see here on special, uh, uh, as a special event uh, on Spotlight on the Arts. Well, Gary, you've shared so much information before the break. Now I'd like you to join me in presenting to the viewers a field taping that you permitted me to do at your gallery in Washington, Missouri. Mm -hmm. I'd like to open that up with, uh, the clip opens with a look at your front door mm -hmm. of your gallery in Washington, Missouri. Then we find you inside, standing by a beautiful painting of a winter scene on canvas. It's a winter scene, I'm sorry. Appearing to be a typical scene of a herd of black Angus cattle. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us the history behind the opening at the gallery there at 231 West Main in Washington, Missouri? Well, that, the end of it, the piece of work that you made reference to there was, uh, I kind of got in that by accident. Uh, one of the fellows I have coffee with um, has some Angus cattle and so forth, and uh, he took me out on his ranch to, to show me his cattle. And, and uh, I did this one piece, uh, kind of is a bit of a joke, so to speak, because one of the other guys that I have coffee with, he raises Herefords, and the two of them oh. are into it, Angus, Hereford, oh, Angus. I see. So I wound up doing this piece, and uh, the uh, uh, basically this farm is where uh, my friend grew up and that sort of thing. Yes. Uh, consequently, I, uh, I've had several people respond, and, and I'm almost saying this is my bovine period to a certain extent. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, but it's been, they've been fun pieces to do. And that's a very uh, impressive piece, once again. Uh, oh, well, thank uh, you. Awesome, I think it's awesome. And being well, I was, that it. piece I was very, uh, if, if I understand what you're talking with, is I was very impressed with the landscape, uh, the, the composition, and that beautiful sycamore tree and so forth yes, that was in the background yes. there. Well, we next find you inside your studio mm -hmm. at the same location. You're working on a painting of an old steamboat, surely docked along the Mississippi or Missouri River, possibly at St. Charles, Missouri, if mm -hmm. it may look was correct. It a, yeah, was it a steamboat or was it a keelboat? It okay. was, a, I think that was the... Uh, a keelboat, yes. I believe. A keelboat. Yeah. I believe okay. a keelboat. It, uh, uh, I believe I remember that, right. That uh, actually, uh, that is... Um, the arrival of the uh, Spanish galley La Vigilante oh. at uh, St. Charles in yes. 1795. Uh, it's a piece of work that uh, the city of St. Charles commissioned me to do f to uh, celebrate their 250th anniversary that's coming up next year, you Excellent. see. Mm -hmm. And uh, I jumped at the opportunity to do that particular piece because uh, if you study your history and so forth, you'll realize that uh, there are almost, there's almost no imagery of that late 1700s brown water river vessels like keelboats and that yes. sort of thing, you see. And uh, that's one thing that I've tried to do with my work is to, to, to bring history alive. Most historians, uh, uh, they uh, read and interpret either on a text format or an oral format. I read and interpret on a visual format, you see. I see. And um, historic interpretation has been around with us for ever since they started painting on the side of caves to interpret their exactly. heritage and things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I, I've uh, really enjoyed being involved with that and uh, I wanted to actually do this piece with uh, this piece with the La Vigilante um, for about 25 years, but I really couldn't find, I didn't find a buyer for it. And, uh, and that's another thing that I, I do have lots of interesting ideas to, the, the, the rivers were the highways of our heritage. My whole series is basically built around inland waterways, the highways of our heritage. And um, I, I have several really unique ideas. One deals with the Osage and uh, so forth of uh, river uh, transportation and so forth. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking for some people that might be interested in this project and so forth. Yes. Uh, yeah. They used to have 40 and 50 foot dugout canoes 
and they had lashed them together uh, and, tra and used trade goods and moved them around. I, I did a painting of Cahokia, 1150 AD, uh, many years ago, and Cahokia, in my opinion, was the, the, the major trade, trade hub of North America. Excellent. I love history. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, I try to use the pieces as teaching tools as well as, uh, as aesthetic uh, presentations in themselves. Excellent. Well, next we go to, I understand that there's a three-headed dragon that hangs on uh, hangs on out in your studio. Well, it, yeah. Would I, you explain that three-headed dragon? I have well, so many people ask me about the three-headed dragon. The word is out. Yeah, well, I, he may still only just have two heads. I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> he has multiple heads. Actually, about almost 30 years ago, uh, I would after I would use a palette for three to five days, mm -hmm. it would become uh, lethargic. The, the paint would start to dry and so forth. So I would scoop it up and I threw it in a coffee can. And I filled up the coffee can, then pretty soon I filled up another coffee can. And then that coffee can had an arch from one to the next. And as we went up, she just started to grow. So uh, I, I, just, I, I developed this dragon's head. And then we went with a tail and a body and things like that. And I have kiddos come in from time to time and it's a little fourth grade class. And I said, the dragon, and they, they said, well, why doesn't the dragon have wings? And so I, oh man, I gotta make wings. Oh, so wings. it took me about three years to make each wing that yes. came out and so forth. But uh, the, the dragon, the two-headed dragon, she weighs all oh, about 140 pounds. It's solid paint from one end to the other. And you're seeing it right here with the, the, uh, the dialogue as we speak. Uh, you're seeing the actual footage. You know, it's an interesting oh. thing. Kiddos come in in like in the fourth grade and add some paint to it i let them add to it and then about 20 years later they come in with their 10 year old child or whatever you know and, oh, I see. and uh, uh uh they say well you see that little piece of red i put that on there 20 oh, years ago yes. and so it's an interesting kind well, of a living sculpture so to speak you've also had some distingu uh, distinguished visitor in uh, the world of politics oh sure yeah i'm sure the honorable would uh, recognize mm -hmm. um senator yes yeah, senator. senator roy blunt senator roy uh, roy blunt has supported my work i first met him i guess in 91 and he's supported my work ever since then and as part of Missouri and in the development of Missouri and so forth, especially the rivers and that sort of thing. So uh, he's uh, been, uh, well, I guess you might say a good friend. Excellent. Well, now we move on to some of the technical aspects, I guess. You know, mm -hmm. everyone starts a painting, they get an idea, but they somehow they, they have to have something to go by. So there's usually a pencil sketch um, that uh, we work with mm -hmm. generally or photographs uh, and you do generally start with a pencil sketch mm -hmm. I, I would say well uh, I do use pencil sketches I, I, I fill up a lot of sketchbooks over the years I have got piles of sketchbooks and I always I encourage artists always maintain a sketchbook uh, like for instance if I the, the project I just mentioned with St. Charles uh, I, I had about four projects going in a large sketchbook. I encourage ki uh, kiddos to uh, get spiral bound sketchbooks and actually get good ones uh, oh, with uh, acid free paper and so forth. Uh, people come to me and say, well, my child or whatever is, wants to be an artist, what can I do? I say, the first thing you do is buy them a sketchbook, yes. a good one, and uh, let them fill that sketchbook up and when it fills up, you, you move to another one. Mm -hmm. And tell the kiddos to sign everything they do and, and date it. Because oh. can you imagine having your grandmother's sketchbook and so yes. forth signed uh, and dated, yeah, how wonderful that would be. Yes. And that good paper allows it not to yellow and that sort of thing. But buy your kids uh, these sketchbooks and, and uh, let them fill them up. And not only to draw, but you can also use sketchbooks as a diary as well. Uh, I write in my sketchbooks a lot of times. I'll be doing research on a project and I'll simply write things down. And later on, I come back and say, well, now what was that? Let me look up, go to that sketchbook and label them, you know? And you, oh, I remember that. Make and those you special make notes right. for, for me. So I work in the sketchbook and then from there on a major piece of work, I'll do a small preliminary study in paint. Oh, yes. uh, the, uh, the, um, 
uh, drawing establishes composition, contrast, and then I move into paint to uh, values, and it kind of tells me problems that I'm going to run around, uh, run sure. into in the yes. larger piece. And so technically, forth. technically speaking, that's uh, you definitely have to get that. Uh, I guess to plan that out too. Sure. You well, know, I plan a painting. I just don't sit down and. Some people, you know, Bob Ross, what have you, but no, I, I guess I'm a planner. That comes from that, that accounting background. Mm -hmm. But I guess this this would be a word, that the sketchbooks, you could share with the four-year-old kiddo. Oh, sure. The 50-year-old kiddo. Old kiddo or, and, kiddo. and have so the kiddo sign their name. I'll tell you another thing. If you have children, uh, this comes from my <clears throat> teaching days and so forth. Uh, if, if a kiddo comes up to you and he has a drawing that they're proud of and so forth, uh, don't ask the child what it is. Say, what is this? Don't That's ask them that. Excellent. Ask them to tell you about it. Yes, what's the story? Uh, oh, and they'll tell you about yeah. it. Oh, that just, this is a dog, and mom and dad, we went on a picnic, and we had a good time, and things like that. Yeah. But if you say, well, what is this? They're like, don't you understand? Don't you see what <laughs> that is? And I it's say, hard for me at uh, six years old to describe what well, yeah. I can't say that in my words. Well, I understand. Uh, that. From my years of teaching and so forth, mm -hmm. my year of teaching and, and being around, kiddos and arts, uh, I always feel that the most perfect piece of art is produced by a 10-year-old child. Wow. And the reason I say that is because prior to this age, you, you have this sort of a scribbling stage of development and things like that. And by the time they're 10 years old, they're expressing their thoughts. And the thoughts are, are, are individual, they're perfect as far as that's concerned. <clears throat> by the time the kiddo gets to be 12 to 13 years old, then uh, peer pressure sets in and, and that influences and that their thought pattern. locks yeah. the lips and yes, with five and six, there's the story. I'll tell you more about it. I understand that 100%. Well, now Gary also shared with me that uh, while touring your gallery, and I took many, uh, uh, quite a bit of footage of it, that when you paint you a project involving some type of boat, whether a flat boat or or one used by Tom and Huck mm -hmm. in Mark Twain's Adventures, you'll see some of those. Um, or Steamboat, uh, you start with a replica that you have a gentleman make out of wood, and then get, you get down to detail from that replica of that boat. Well, um, in, uh, I guess it was uh, 89, I took a trip west to do some research on the Missouri River and so forth. I was gone for a month, and I met a gentleman that built models. Uh, and uh, if you remember the Star Wars series that came out and so forth, uh, you th see these spaceships and you think they're, really, they're spaceships, but they're not, they're models, you see. And so I thought, if I can find a good model builder, I wanted to recreate the steamboats of the Missouri and the Mississippi River. And in order to do that, I needed a model. So I, I, this gentleman I met was Blair Shaquin out of Sioux City, Iowa. He's uh -huh. a master model builder. Excellent. And I met him, I said, mm -hmm. I wanna buy one model a year from you for the rest of your life, and he lived for nine more years. Uh, if you come to the gallery, you'll see these models that I had built. See, I can light the model the way I want and uh, uh, use it. I just take that and then plug it into my painting. Uh, uh, it's a, kind of an involved process and so forth, but some of these models are fantastic. Uh, I have the best keelboat model. I got one better than the Smithsonian's got. I'll put mine up against. I got mine. I'll put mine up against Smithsonian any day. Well, also we we took a, uh, a tour of the the rest of the gallery, and we're running short on time now. So uh, I understand that. Um, Sandy has a lot to do with the uh, crystal wear and uh, oh. other items. Uh, if you want to give us a brief uh, what, to, what to look for. And when well, we, we've really uh, added, through the years, we've added a lot of other merchandise to the gallery because sometimes, um, and I've experienced this as well, that sometimes galleries can be intimidating uh, just to the passerby. And so it's always been our goal uh, at the Lucy Gallery to make sure that we were not intimidating, you know, because, yes. you know, everybody has an opinion about art, but, you know, at least you know what you like and what you don't like. And, we strive really hard to make our gallery friendly and to open everyone. and things. To everyone. To everyone. Yes. To everyone. Yes. It's, a, it's a huge goal of ours. And so we add a lot of other mix of product, mm -hmm. uh, crystal and dishes and uh, jewelry and things like that, just so that our gallery is open 
and is warm and welcoming to, to all. And, uh, and that's kind of our goal. And our custom framing, you know, we yeah, do a tremendous amount of custom framing, custom framing, custom framing business so and things mm -hmm. like that. It's a it's a, a integral part of our business. And we we just want to be welcoming and open and, and share our knowledge and, and hopefully we'll learn something from everyone. So yes. anyway, so it's our goal. Well, thank you again for letting me make the tape, which the viewers have uh, already uh, also been able to enjoy. Um, I want to thank you both uh, for allowing me into the gallery and uh, contributing today to Spotlight on the Arts. It has really been an inspiring visit with you both. We're about out of time, so on behalf of Spotlight on the Arts, JCTV, I want to say thanks again, Indeed. Gary and Sandy. Well, Indeed. thank you. Well, thank it you was so a much. It's been, it's been my pleasure, our pleasure. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time right here on Spotlight on the Arts. In the meantime, look for this show and others on uh, Mediacom uh, and uh, naturally on YouTube. So thanks again. Rick J saying see you next time. <laughs>